making a steam plant using three Cotswold Heritage steam engines. And already this is part 11. And you'll be pleased to know I'm not doing much piping in this episode. What I'm going to do is make some exhaust adapters because all of these small engines do not have any exhaust pipe adapters. The threads on the exhaust outlets of these engines are only 3 sixteenths by 40 threads per inch, which is very small. And if I was to pipe these engines using 3 sixteenths by 40 threads, the union nuts would be far too small and therefore the pipe would be very small. And the whole point of a gas engine is to get rid of the gas in a large volume and very quickly as soon as it's done its work. And a steam engine is a gas engine because steam is an invisible gas. Very unlike the stuff that comes out of your kettle and the chimney of steam locomotives, be the traction engines or locomotives on the railway, because that is water vapour. Anyway, on with the job. This is my old micrometer and I'm just checking that it's set to 0 0.250, which is a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to cut this part of the metal bar to a quarter of an inch in diameter. This is a piece of hexagon brass. And I'm going to convert this very plain lump of hexagon brass into an exhaust adapter. 3 sixteenths by 40 threads per inch to a quarter by 40 threads per inch. I'm machining and threading the quarter inch side first, then once it's parted off I will reverse it in the chuck and machine the other side. I've cut the thread using a quarter by 40 threads per inch die in my tailstock die holder and now I'm centre drilling the end to take the union cone. When doing a job like this always use a centre drill first for a couple of reasons to make sure the hole is in the centre of the bar and to form the seating for the union cone. Don't just make a mark with the centre drill and then drill through with a smaller diameter twist drill because then when you come to refit the centre drill and you get to the tapered part it's likely to chatter. I'm now drilling a hole in the work using a number 48 drill and as you can see it has a piece of fuel tubing on it because this was the drill that I used for drilling the holes in the baseboard. It's most important when making union adapters like this not to use too large a diameter drill otherwise the 3 16 by 40 part of this will be very weak and you don't want it to snap off in the engine's exhaust port. In this clip I'm parting off the half finish union and in this clip using a spanner that's not a particularly good fit and this is why I always use my Barco spanner as a rule I'm screwing this fitting into a union nut fitted in the chuck. Why am I doing this? It's a hexagon fitting. I could put it in the chuck jaws. But the problem is, the piece of hexagon that's going to be left is very small and the chuck jaws will damage this. So you get a better finish by doing it this way. This is a very lazy and possibly not the most accurate way to machine a steam fitting. If I was a proper engineer, I would put a piece of brass hexagon in the chuck, I would drill it tapping size for quarter by 40, then I would thread the piece of hexagon bar in the chuck, quarter by 40 threads per inch, and then I would screw my fitting into that and that way everything would be perfectly concentric. But as this is not a precision item, the union nut is more than satisfactory for doing this, and more importantly, it takes a lot less time to do it this way. I've noticed these days that they don't let me out of the asylum for prolonged periods, and the men in white coats seem to arrive a lot more frequently to drag me back kicking and screaming to the asylum. Last year I was doing some work on my next door neighbour's computer, because I do a bit of that and I was trying to solve my next door neighbour's network problem, which I did in the end. But while I was working on the system next door, my neighbour noticed that one of the routers in the local area was called Lunatic Asylum, and he said, why does it keep saying Lunatic Asylum on my computer? And I explained that it was the name of a local router, and he said, oh, right. Then he thought about it and he said, is that your router then? And I actually got a bit worried because my next door neighbour's a doctor. And while I've been talking about the happy place known as the Lunatic Asylum, where life is wonderful all the time, I've been machining the other end of this piece of brass hexagon down to 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, and I'm currently threading it 3 sixteenths by 40 threads per inch using my homemade tailstock die holder adapter, which again speeds up the job. So that's one of the thread adapters completed. I have to make another two. Mass production for beginners. In this clip I'm just doing a test fit of the adapter into the engine and it fits perfectly. It wants cleaning up on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper to get rid of the sharp edges. I'm really sorry about this but after that mass production I was in the mood for a bit more piping. 
so I piped the water pump into the system. I know I said earlier that there wasn't any piping in this episode, but I got it wrong. I actually lied. I'm test fitting one of the exhaust adapters to the aerial steam engine, just to make sure that it's not too long to go into the exhaust port, and no it isn't, it's fine. Oh dear, where's the Perseus gone? It's evaporated. This is the exhaust adapter that I'm going to fit to the Perseus, but the problem is that it's not in a good place. The Union adapter fits, but then the nut doesn't want to go on. I'm quite puzzled as to why these three engines don't have exhaust fittings in the first place. But never mind, I'll make my own. This is my answer to the exhaust fitting for the Perseus. This is a PM Research 90 degree elbow, and I had to re-tap the thread to make it compatible with all my quarter by 40 fittings. This part of the job wasn't planned, but in order to fit the exhaust adapter to the engine, it has to come apart. I just remove the cylinder from the bed plate. Then with the help of some Loctite 542 and a copper shim washer, I rotate the part into the correct orientation. So now the engine has an exhaust outlet, which is very easy to connect a pipe to and disconnect a pipe from. It's time now to test the water piping. I'm putting some water into my water tank. I replace the aluminium cap, and then it's over to the hand pump. And by vigorously pumping the handle on the hand pump, the water is slowly pumped out of the water tank and into the boiler. This is a nice touch on this hand pump. There's a lubrication point on the top of it. So I thought it was a good time to apply some oil and then it was back to the pumping. I ended up using about a tank and a half of water to get the water to the level you're about to see in the water gauge. I speeded up the video and as you can see, once it appears in the bottom nut of the water gauge, in no time at all, the gauge glass becomes half full. A quick look at the water tank and, hang on, where's my aluminium cap gone? Oh no, Inspector Meticulous must have been correct. The cathodic electrolytic corrosion has dissolved the cap. But you can relax, it's actually here. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.